he has it where you have to drop this locking block into the gun and then drill through the plastic and the locking block. All right, party people. So today's video is gonna be very special because not only are we gonna be talking about the SS80, but we're gonna be doing a Q&A as well. And uh, we just got it about a month ago. I like gray, so I'm kind of glad that we waited because I really like gray frames for those of you who don't know me. But this was a very interesting build because I've done a ton of polymer 80s and I was very curious to see how this one actually kind of compares to polymer 80 given that it's basically just a ripoff of polymer 80. Uh, no pun intended. So for those of you who are following me on Instagram or Facebook, or if you have that notification bell ticked, there's a community page here on YouTube where I can make posts similar to the way I do on Instagram and Facebook. And I asked everybody, I just said, hey, ask me anything. It could be gun related or not. Now we obviously have about 480 something questions. So I'm not gonna be able to answer every individual question. So the main questions that I'm gonna be answering today are gonna be the questions about things that I really haven't covered a whole lot in videos. Um, it, they're probably gonna be like off gun topic, but I'm gonna talk about some gun stuff as well. And there's also a lot of repeats of the same questions from different people. For those types of questions where I've talked about it in numerous videos, like, hey, what's your go-to everyday carry gun type stuff? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put links to each video that covered that topic because it's stuff that I've talked about numerous times. Um, so that's what we're doing today is Q&A and we're gonna be mixing it up, talking about what my first impressions are of the SS80 um, Glock 43 build. All right, so let's just answer question number one. A uh, Brass Brigade on Instagram asked, have you ever done a review on a custom Glock build and actually put over 15,000 rounds on it? I'm gonna answer that question in a couple of different ways. Number one, uh, I don't count rounds beyond a certain amount. However, on the flip side of that, I do believe my very first Glock that I ever owned was the very first one that I customized here on the channel. And that one probably has over 15,000 rounds because for the first year or so on YouTube, that was pretty much the main Glock that I shot and tested different parts on. And so I would get a part and I'd go out and put a few hundred rounds through it. And I'd get another part, go out and put a few hundred rounds through it and make a video. So. I believe so. And that gun's actually still running very good. I'll show it to you. So this is basically my very first gun that I ever bought. It's a Gen 4 Glock 19. Um, a lot of stuff has changed on this gun. The slide is OEM. It was just customized and Cerakoted. Um, I have the Tyrant CNC compensator on here. We're testing that right now. I'll have a video coming about that soon. Got a barrel on here from Nanook Precision and a trigger from Nanook Precision. Those will be coming soon. It's a newer company that I'm kind of just testing some of their products for. The only thing that is different really about this gun is the frame. Um, the original frame was stippled and I had a micro dot stippling done on it and that stipple pattern actually collapses in on itself. So I just bought a new frame, but it's a hybrid of my original gun. So it still runs good, but I swap parts out so much. I don't think there's actually one setup where I've ever like put 15,000 rounds on because I'm always swapping stuff out. So with the SS80, uh, it's a very interesting gun. If you haven't seen my previous video I did on an OEM customized Glock 43, I'll put a link to that video down below. But one thing I don't like about the standard Glock 43 is when I press out, this finger here actually hits the trigger guard when I'm trying to come to the trigger position right here. But as you can see, because the trigger guard on this one bulges outward in the front, instead of being flat like that, my finger doesn't hit with this one. So this one might be promising. Um, on the top here, I have the shield arms, mag extension, shield arms, slide, true precision barrel, apex trigger, agent night sights. I will have a complete build list. I also just uploaded a full tutorial on how to do this over at GunStreamer. That will be the first link in the video description because we're not allowed to put tutorials on YouTube anymore. So that will be there. So if you wanna go watch it after this video, then you're good to go. And that's also where all the build list and everything and coupon codes are located as well. So there's a couple of questions on YouTube. And so Tim Smith and DJ Mays, and there's a couple other people that basically were all asking the same question. What do you do for a living? How do you afford these guns? And also I'm combining their questions to answer them as one. And also what did you do before YouTube and how did you get into YouTube and guns in general? So let me just answer all that at once. 
To answer your first question, number one, this is my job. I do get paid to play with guns. Now, companies don't pay me directly. They don't like cut me a check and say, here's a $5,000 rifle and here's a check for a couple thousand dollars. Go make us an awesome video. That's not how it works. It's a little bit more convoluted than that. In fact, companies don't pay me at all, but they do send me parts for free. Um, sometimes I get to keep those parts. Sometimes I have to send those parts back. But that doesn't bother me if I got to send them back because I usually only review stuff that I think that you, the viewer, are actually going to enjoy or have a lot of questions about. Now, the way I earn a living is through affiliate marketing, which is essentially when I create build lists and I'll say, hey, I'll put links below in the description. Basically, the way that works is if you click that link and actually purchase something, it doesn't even have to be the product that I link to they'll give me a small percentage of the sale. And when I say small, I mean, it's usually about 5%. Sometimes it's 2% because physical goods that are made in the USA have such small profit margins. But over time, if you can get thousands of people to purchase, you can actually make a living. So no, a lot of these parts, I couldn't afford all of this in its entirety. Couldn't afford to do five, 20, you know, six different Polymer 80 builds and eight different AR builds. That's just not in the cards. Because if I, if I could afford that, I would be so busy working at a day job every day that I would never have time to make videos. So it's, it's one of those catch 22s. That's why some channels, they don't grow because you got to learn how to get out of your job because this kind of video editing stuff, I mean, each video for me takes at least 12 hours between testing products, um, filming, editing, and publishing the video. It's a good 12 hours per video, and that's not including the videos I do the cinematic editing in. Uh, what I did before YouTube was uh, from age 20 to 29, my goal was to get into medical school and become an orthopedic surgeon. But when I did my undergraduate, I didn't major in science. I majored in business just in case things didn't go right. I did all of my science prerequisites as my elective, so I had no fun electives. I was all taking biochemistry and stuff like that. However, once I got to the MCAT test, the medical college admissions test, I took it three times. Lots of people take it three or four times before they get in. That's nothing new. The difference was I studied six months every time I took the test. I hired tutors, all that crazy stuff, and I couldn't get past a certain point or certain score in order to be considered for med school. And when I think back on that, I think it was due to me just burn, burning out. By the time I finished my undergrad, worked full time, volunteered at hospitals, shadowed physicians, studied 18 months total, you know, to take that MCAT test, I was done. I was just burnt out. I had nothing left to give that. And so I quit. A lot of people in my family and friends were like, wait, why would you quit? You have seven years into this and $100,000 in student loan debt why would you stop now my answer to that was i've changed it's not me and so a lot of people including my wife were like very uneasy about that and because i spent all of my 20s in college and studying i kind of lost pretty much all my friends or lost touch with friends they just didn't have time for one another and then i lost all my hobbies like i forgot what i like to do for fun because i was always working so I, I told my wife i said i need a year to figure it out and obviously she was like yeah that's gonna be bad if i gotta work for the rest of my life why not do something that i want to do have fun and figure out how i can earn a living doing that so instead of trying to find a job that paid well i just figured out what I wanted to do for fun every day, if I, let's just say I had a million dollars in the bank, I would still do this every single day because it's something that I enjoy. So I figured that part out and then I figured out how the heck I'm gonna monetize it. And so that's kind of how we got to here. Now to answer your question on how I actually got into guns, that's a long story, but I'm gonna give you the very shortened version. My wife and I were in separate cars. We stopped off at a Circle K at 10 o'clock at night. I went inside to pay. Two guys pulled up beside the pump, started hitting on her, which is fine. She's hot, whatever. I don't get jealous. But when I came out, they drove away. They staked out behind the place. And then when we got onto the freeway, because we were in separate cars, I was about a quarter mile ahead of her. And they followed her onto the freeway and tried to get her to pull off onto the side of the road. She called me panicking. I said, hey, exit here, go to here, go to the valet. There's a lot of cops there. And I was there waiting for her. And then in, in her panic, she got in the wrong turning lane and they were still following her. Thankfully, nothing happened. She actually faked them out. As they turned left, she got back onto the freeway and everything has been fine. However, that really 
scared her. And it really frightened me because typically I was at work um, those nights. And I was like, what she, what would she have done if she hadn't had me there to talk her through it? You know? And so that's kind of what got the ball rolling about the firearms thing. And then about nine months later, our son was born. And two weeks after he was born, we were at the gun store buying guns. Now I haven't fired this gun yet. This is just the first impressions video, but basically it feels really good in the hand. Um, one problem I did have when I was building it was I, my trigger wasn't resetting. And over in the tutorial, I show you how I fixed that. It was basically, I had to fix the bend angle of the connector in the trigger and it was good to go. I've already tested this slide. I've already tested this barrel. I basically tested everything on this gun aside from the frame, which will be in the next uh, Glock 43, AKA SS80 video. But all those parts work great. So given that this frame works good, then I'm gonna be pretty excited if it does work, even though I'm not a huge fan of single stack guns. Kyle Carroll said, hey, can you make a video of just your shooting drills, shooting tips? What helped you become a better shooter? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually planning on doing that. I just, I was only a gun owner for about six months when I started YouTube. And YouTube has been my way of learning more and more about guns and fundamentals about guns. You know, creating videos and getting access to different things and different people, I've learned a lot, but I never created those types of videos because I never felt like I had any type of say in that, right? Like I was, I'm not a gun trainer, I'm not an instructor, but there is a lot of things that I've written down over the past couple of years. I'm like, wow, that really helped me shoot faster or that really helped me shoot better and more accurately. So I do have some videos for that coming soon. So that's a great question. Uh, Kenny Do 61 ask, uh, what's your background? Military? Did you go to college? I apologize if you answered these. Okay, so I already covered that one. Um, I do have a bachelor's degree in business finance, but no, I don't have any military and I don't have any law enforcement um, experience. Main reason, I was actually going to join the Marines when I was 19, but I had spinal surgery when I was 11 on my spinal cord. And so I can't get into any type of military or law enforcement, even if I wanted to. I actually went to the recruiter and all that. And they're like, yeah, you're not getting in. I'm like, great. Uh, Frank Wang really asked a good question. He goes, hey, where would you like to take your channel in the next five years? That's a great question. And it's something that I've been so busy these past few months, or actually this whole past year. I've been so busy with things. I haven't really had a chance to reflect on it. Just to give you guys a little bit of context, text in March of 2018, YouTube created new rules regarding firearms, specific rules, meaning like no, no build tutorials, no how to install part tutorials, and no links in the description that directly link to a website that sell gun parts or gun accessories. That's why I always link to product. That's why I always link to GunStreamer and you can go watch the video over there. And over there, all the links and coupon codes are located there because they now violate the rules. When they changed the rules about not being able to do build videos and stuff, that kind of made me question what I want to do on YouTube because I didn't and always want to just do reviews. I liked doing tutorials and stuff and helping people solve their problems. And so I, I really like that question on where I want the channel to be in the next five years because I honestly haven't even had a chance to think about it because I've been working so hard. Because I like doing things that are different from everybody else. You know, whenever you have a niche, at whatever the community is, at least on YouTube, everybody starts looking the same and sounding the same and doing the same things. And that's something that I, and then from there, I started toning it back. I just was really curious about about what those products were. The main reason I put the rail on it was there wasn't any videos available on it, but I did about four, maybe five videos on this. But right now, as it sits, I haven't really had a chance to do much more to it, but I do have more planned for it. I have a couple other mods that I haven't done to it yet, but last year at this time was when we were making the videos on that. So if you wanna watch that later after this video, I'll put a playlist below so you can check it out. But yeah, so that's the shotgun. And to answer your other question about J frames, I don't have any J frames, but I do have the Smith & Wesson M&P R8. Uh, this is their tactical quote unquote for SWAT teams. At least that's the story that Smith & Wesson has told us. Um, this is a really cool, but really expensive revolver. And I do have a series planned for this. I wanna start putting some stuff on it. I've made one video so far where I had a big old red dot mounted to the top and everybody had a conniption fit about putting a red dot on it. And I'm like, well, why else did they include a rail for the top if it wasn't meant for a red dot? Um, it also has a rail on the bottom too for like lasers and lights if that's something you're into. But to be really honest with you, you know, this is my very first experience with a revolver and I just don't know how I feel about them. And it comes down to the way you grip a handgun. So for example, with a semi-auto, you grip it here, you wrap your hand and then your left thumb goes forward, your right thumb goes over. 
and I really like that grip because I feel like it's super secure. Whereas with a revolver, it's completely different. Instead of wrapping the right thumb over your support hand, you gotta put your left thumb over your grip hand. And it's really odd and it's, it, it feels funny to me, I'm not gonna lie. So when I'm reaching out, like I'm so used to having thumbs forward, well, you can't do that with these because of the fire that can come out of here, can burn the crap off your finger or blow it off completely. So you have to keep all your fingers behind the cylinder. I don't know 100% how I feel about this yet, but I definitely have more videos coming on this. But if you haven't seen the original video, I'll link that below as well. Lauren Gomez asked, um, if you could start your YouTube career over again, knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently? Nothing. I'm not one of those people that ever has regrets or ever wants to go back and change something I've done because anytime I've made a mistake, I've, I've learned and I've grown from that mistake. I wouldn't know what I knew today if I didn't make certain mistakes in the past. So therefore I wouldn't change anything. But that is a great question. FKN Slim, is that your name? On Instagram ask if we're gonna do the Polymer 80 PF45 build. And to answer that question, yeah, I have one right here. I just, I just don't have the slide or the parts kits yet. I'm waiting on that. But this is the PF45 frame. Um, for those of you that don't know, this will work for 45 or 10 millimeter. I'm actually gonna do 10 millimeter because I don't own a 10 millimeter yet. I, I have a 45, which is the 1911. So we're gonna do this in 10 millimeter. That is gonna come just as soon as the parts arrive. So make sure you uh, hit that little notification button if you haven't already, so you can get notified when this build comes. So yeah, we're gonna do that, you know it. There, and, and speaking of Polymer 80, when I was at SHOT Show, I sat down at the booth with them, talked to them, and they have a lot of new stuff coming out. Um, there's actually gonna be, it's not a Roni, and I don't remember the name of the company that's making it, but they're coming out with a carbine that will work with like any handgun that you want, um, semi-auto, and it has like these uh, different adapters and stuff, but it will work with Polymer 80s, whereas the Roni and the Fab Defense KPOS don't. So that stuff is coming, so keep that in mind. So let's get off the questions again and talk about the SS80 a little bit more. So like I mentioned earlier, I am excited to go shoot this because no longer does my trigger index trigger finger hit the trigger guard going from the index position down. Also, after you watch this video, go check out the tutorial that I have on this uploaded at GunStreamer. That's also where the build list as well as any applicable coupon codes will be so you can do a little shopping around and stuff like that. Because I do have links and codes for different places where you can source different parts if that's something you're into. Honestly, this build went quite easily um, as I put it together given that I guess it's probably from my experience of doing a lot of polymer 80s. The one thing that wouldn't work was I couldn't get the trigger, I couldn't get the trigger to reset with the aftermarket slide for some reason. And then with the OEM slide, the trigger would sometimes reset. And I thought it was the apex trigger. So I took that out and then I put the OEM trigger in and it was the same thing. Turned out it was the bend angle of the connector. It's a super easy adjustment, but I, I included that in that video show you guys how to change the bend angle. And that doesn't just apply to this gun, that applies to any Glock that's having problems resetting. But once I got the bend angle fixed, everything is functioning flawlessly. I've tested the drop safe. So here it is, you know. I mean, I've done this multiple times, but yeah, it's, it's passing drop safe, but it feels really good in the hand. I'm actually kind of surprised by this. You know, during the past year, as people have been building these, I've, I've seen some things where people have reported that their frames got a little bit of cracking inside as they were shooting them. So that's something I'm gonna be looking for. And a lot of people said that the polymer felt cheap, but in my opinion, it feels just fine. I don't know if maybe they, they've since changed the type of polymer that they've used, but this one feels just as good as the Polymer 80. One thing that was very interesting though about this build was in your front locking block up here where this rail section is, it drops in just like the Polymer 80. On the original tutorial series that Lenny McGill put out, now I don't know if he changed that because my locking block already had a hole in it. So your mileage may vary on that um, because I just pulled the locking block out and I was like, oh, there's already a hole there. I thought I was gonna have to drill through metal, but there's no drilling through metal, at least with this one. Um, let me know down in the comments if you've built one of these recently 
Did you have to drill through the locking block as well? Because mine didn't need it. It was a production model. It wasn't one that was like specially sent just for me. I don't really care for Glock 43s or single stacks in general, but I, I will say it, it definitely, so far, we still gotta go out and drive. We gotta go out and fire it. I just couldn't today. It's pouring down rain, so I can't go shooting today or tomorrow, but I'll definitely have a second video of this with a detailed, review and probably get about five or 600 rounds through it before I make that video. Um, so that'll be like the initial review, but first impressions are awesome. It, it went together really nicely. The only issue I had was the bend angle of the connector, but otherwise this thing seems like it might be a dream to shoot, but we'll see. Back to the question. So next question is uh, WJO55 on Instagram ask, can you do the best ways to build on a budget type videos? I think people might like that or like budget builds that don't sacrifice much quality. I'd prefer if you'd start with the M&P uh, 2.0. Thank you very much. Um, I, I do have a whole playlist on budget builds. I will link that below so you guys can go check that out. I do need to do a new update of the Glock um, budget builds because over time prices have changed. So I did a video, I think about a year ago on like the cheapest way to build polymer 80s or Glocks and things like that. However, as more and more companies create products, prices come down. So those, those videos get outdated very quickly. So I will do another update for the Glock one. And for the M&P 2.0, I mean, Honestly, all that gun needs is an apex trigger and you're good to go. It really doesn't need anything else because I have two of them and I have a lot of stuff on them. Like I've changed the sights, I've changed the barrels, I've changed the, the slides on them, but literally an MMP 2.0 with the apex tactical trigger, that, that's probably the best build that you can do for the money versus Glock and uh, CZ and all of those, in my personal opinion. Now, out of the factory, the CZ P10C has the best trigger, but when you put the Apex in an MP, it, it just changes your life. The reset, here, I'll show you. So, a lot of people think I'm full of crap when I say that the Apex trigger in the MP 2.0 is the closest thing to a 1911 trigger that I've ever felt in a striker fired pistol. And I want to show you real fast. This is my 1911. Let me show you the trigger pull. There's take up, break, I mean, reset, break. Okay, you're never gonna make a striker fire pistols trigger feel like that. It's just impossible. It's just a completely different design. However, this is the closest that I've found. M&P 2.0, so there's a little slack here, but here's the wall. I mean, see how short that, that break was? There's the reset. There's the break. I've never seen another striker fire pistols trigger do that. And it's funny because the Apex in the Glock doesn't do that. The Apex in the FN 509 Tactical isn't that good. So the best, the cheapest way to do an MVP 2.0 is just to put that trigger in it. That's it. So Lavash Miller has a really good question. He asks, could I do a CMMG Banshee or build my own. Personal debate of mine on whether the radial delay blowback justifies the price. So if you haven't seen my video series on this CMMG Banshee, it's a nine millimeter Glock Mag compatible AR pistol system. One of the problems with AR pistol systems that shoot nine millimeter is the bolt comes back prematurely before the round has completely exited the barrel, which that reduces in lower velocities of the bullet. This one has what's called radial delay blowback. And what it is, it's a, it's a bolt carrier group that essentially has like a millisecond or so of delay before it unlocks and allows the bullet to escape. The downside with this is it's about a 14 or $1,500 pistol, but I love this thing to death. It is definitely my favorite AR pistol that shoots nine millimeter. My thing about that is uh, I believe you can buy these radial delay blowback um, bolt carrier groups separately if you can. Follow the first link in the description and go over to like my tutorial series where I'm doing this, I mean this SS80, and I'll put a link for it over there in that video description because I can't post them here on YouTube. But I do believe that you can build one from another company and use the CMMG Banshee bolt carrier group. And that's all you need for it to be radial delay blowback. However, with that said, I would also buy their buffer and spring kit as well because those two things are meant to work together. So if I was gonna build like another type of AR pistol, I would use the buffer, the buffer spring that comes with this one and then get the bolt carrier group. But to be honest, I've never tested it. So that might be an interesting video for the future. Let me know if you guys want me to do more Q and A videos because I 
don't mind answering questions. It's a lot easier for me to do it this way than to write uh, 300 emails. I was going through my Facebook messages the other day and I literally had 490 messages that were unread. And uh, I'm like trying to catch up, but it's so difficult. And so don't take it personal if I haven't responded to you in email or Facebook or Instagram. It's just, I, I don't have anyone helping me with this stuff. It's literally just me. But until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.